يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على so um, good evening everybody and it's really a pleasure to have with us uh, Rabbi Shimon uh, Del Hollander who was a very good friend of mine for many, 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 many years. And uh, we have known each other when I was in New York and continued. Uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Del Hollander came to our synagogue many times. And it was really a pleasure. He gave also lectures when he came. It was really, um, uh, very impressive. And uh, so I asked him to be kind enough to give a Zoom lecture. Uh, and... Um, and uh, the topic was really his, and he was uh, offered that one topic, which is very interesting, to see the comparison between Yosef and Yusuf uh, in uh, the Torah and in the Quran. And so uh, Rabbi Dehander is very qualified because of his background in, in, um, in Arabic, uh, Arabic culture, Arabic, Arabic religion, Arabic uh, language, of course, he knows it very, very well, fluently. And uh, also, of course, his uh, Torah knowledge, which is very important. He had Semicha from Yeshiva University and, um, and uh, teaching at uh, Hunter's College, if I'm right. And, uh, and so he's a, really, a very well-qualified person. I'm sure we're going to all enjoy very much this wonderful presentation. So without further ado, and it's better to hear him than to hear me. We ask Shimon, would you please be kind enough to start? Thank you. Thank you so much, Rabbi. And uh, thank you all for uh, attending this uh, lecture. I'm very honored and pleased to uh, be invited uh, to your uh, wonderful thank congregation. Um, and uh, even though it's not in the flesh, as they say, but, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's always good things to every bad thing. So for some strange reason, nobody wants a pandemic, but there is these, uh, I've never heard of Zoom before the pandemic. And now I talk and, and, and teach uh, online, and this is a whole new frontier. It all came from that. So you see, when there's something bad happens, something good can come out of it. And that is one of the messages that we learned from the Joseph story. Joseph went through a lot of bad things and really good things happened. So God willing, all our all our uh, uh, our hardships that we, if we have them in life, we will be very blessed. If we are like Joseph, that good things will come out of every hardship, uh, more uh, more good things than the hardship initially was. Now, Rabbi uh, Gabai had asked me, um, could I talk about the uh, difference between uh, Judaism and Islam? That seemed to be a, a bit of a big topic. Uh, so that would be a very, very long lecture if you want to do anything substantial. Uh, so then I thought, you know, maybe something about the Quran and the Torah. But then I thought that's too big. So let's just start, uh, um, limit ourselves to the story of Joseph, which we are in the middle, uh, reading in the Torah. So it seemed appropriate. And I even think that that is probably too big to cover everything. But we can cover uh, quite a bit, I think. So Yosef and Yusuf. That sounds like a, like a children's story. Yosef and Yusuf go on their way. So they, uh, are they the same people or are they really different people? Is the Joseph in the, in, the, in, the, in the Torah the same person as the Yusuf in the Quran? Historically, they refer to the same people, but we're going to see if that really is. Now, it's interesting that um, there is a whole chapter, whole surah in the, in the Quran dedicated to to the story of Joseph. It's called Surat Yusuf. And there are only 114 chapters in the Quran. So that is uh, one out of 114, uh, Surah 12. Um, uh, that's, that's then a big chunk, right? That's almost 10% um, of the whole Quran. Is, is, well, one, some surahs are much bigger than the others, but the earlier surahs are bigger and the later, the first one, but the second is the biggest, the third is the, the, the second biggest, and then they, so 12 is in the beginning, so it's one of the bigger surahs, so it's a big chunk of the, of the Quran. And here you have a little 
uh, an image. This is part of Surah Yusuf here, of the, of the book, a uh, chapter of Yusuf. So let's start, and we're just go going to go through, um, uh, read part of the, of, of the Quran, with your permission. And because I'm assuming that most of you will be familiar with the story of Joseph in the, in the Torah. Uh, we, uh, if you pay attention, it's really fresh in your memory. Uh, and so, and, and even if you're, some people are not familiar with the Torah story of Joseph, um, I'm going to uh, uh, compare, make comparisons. Now, the first, the first a few lines are, the first three lines, verses, are, uh, is an introduction. And the start really, um, it's, uh, let's say cryptic. It starts with three letters, Elif Lem Ra, which is Aleph Lamet Resh. Uh, and uh, the, that's already funny because, because if you continue, it says these are the verses of the clear book. So the idea is that the Quran is presented as if all these other books are so unclear, but this is very clear. But to start with Alif Lamad Resh, and no, even there's no commentators in the of the Quran that even knows what that means. It's an abbreviation, and it's know what it means. So it's so funny that the first <laughs> the first verse says this is a very clear book, but the first three letters nobody knows what it means. So we'll forgive, we'll forgive. I, it's not that clear, right? But uh, okay, and there's nothing to do with, as far as we know, with uh, with Joseph. But um, maybe people thought it's maybe a remnant of an old, uh, old way of filing or something. Well, we have no idea. But so we'll continue. Indeed, we have sent it down. Uh, what's the book? As an Arabic Quran, so that you may understand. Of course, everybody understands Arabic, obviously. So uh, it's it's given in a. The idea of the Quran is that um, that's for the Arabs. Like we have the Torah, which is in the Hebrew, which in a language that is uh, hard to understand. It's not so clear for most Arabs. Then the Christians uh, used in, 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 in the Arab Peninsula, there were Christians and Jews and, and, and pagans. The Christians often used Syriac, which is an Aramaic dialect. It was also puzzling. And now the idea is that the Quran sends for the Arabs uh, the, the revelation now in an Arabic version. So now they can understand it. That's the introduction. Uh, so once again, it's nothing to do with Joseph necessarily. It's more like a, a general introduction. But now what I have um, uh, printed in bold, that is, that is uh, becomes more interesting. We, okay, the first word is already interesting. This already sheds a big difference between the, the Quran and the Torah. Well, let's finish the, 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 the verse first. We relate to you and you as Muhammad, the best of stories, the, the most wonderful stories through a revelation of this Quran. Though before this, you were totally unaware of them. Ladies and gentlemen, this one verse reveals a lot about the message of the Quran. Because first of all, I said the word we, the word we is telling, right? Who is talking here? The one who's talking here is God. You say, why is God we? Why is it not I? I relate to you, Muhammad, uh, some wonderful stories. Uh, this is all over the Quran, God's talking. And God talks in the, in the how do you say? That's called the, the royal we. So God is, even God, though God is one, he talks in the plural. We. And that is, doesn't apply for Muslims that God is plural because they are very, very strong. And as Maimonides uh, stresses very much, nobody has any doubts uh, that, that, that Muslims are, are, are absolute monotheists. They don't believe in the plurality in God whatsoever. But the we is just only a, uh, a, a royal way to say I. Now, but what's so interesting is that God is talking. The whole Quran, they believe that the Quran is the word of God. We believe the Torah is the word of God. But in Islam, this is taken to a whole different level. If it's the word of God, then God should be speaking to us. But in a literal way, if we read the book of Joseph, we see Joseph did this, Joseph this, did that. Uh, Joseph says God um, is the only one who can explain uh, the dreams. 
um, there is references to God, but you don't say, you don't hear God speaking in a literal way that, oh, I blessed Joseph and I let him go to Egypt, or, or we, or I, or whatever you say. That is not the, the style of the Torah. So the, the fact that we say the Torah is the word of God that speaks to us, that is not in such a, I wouldn't say literal way. Yeah, but the style, I, I, I'm not saying it's not literally God's word, uh, but what we, what we, how, how we take the term word of God, the term the word of God is more subtle, I would say. Um, there are stories, uh, but even though the rabbis have over, the, over time um, adopted the idea that the Torah was dictated to Moses, literally, and Moses might not have understood it, but just write them, that's not, that is not literally what the Torah tells us. That is more like a, did they mean that me metaphorically? Did they mean that literally? That is hard to know. We cannot really interview the rabbis about that. But it is a derived. It's a derived idea, but it's not in your face in the, in the book itself. The Quran, it is. And, and, and um, just to say one more little thing about the we form, there are, as far as I know, as I can recall, two instances in, the, in Genesis, in Bereshit, where God speaks uh, about himself as we. Let us make men in our image. And also um, in mm -hmm. the, the, the sons of the, the B'nai Elohim take the, yes. the daughters of, of, uh, of, of, of men. And okay. then they say, um, our, uh, we, our spirit shall not be in them forever. So uh, for a long time, well, we kept their lifespan to 120. I think that's not the other instance where the, the us form is used. And in, in, the, in, in the rabbinic tradition, that has been a huge debate. Why, if God is only one, why does he speak in the, in the plural? And Christians have used it by saying, ah, see, God is plural. Ah, that's because he's talking to the other two persons of the Trinity. And there's all these, uh, and then Rashi says, not, he's not the first one who says it. Oh, he's probably speaking to the angels. But then there's a problem because if he said, let us make men, and he says to the angels, does that mean that the angels were co-creators? No, he did not. So they only asked it because of courtesy, maybe. It's not an easy thing. For Muslims, that, they would not even be bothered with the we, if, even if they read the Torah, because they're used to it. God always speaks to the we form. For them, that's a non-issue. Okay, just, I, I think it might be interesting. Once again, this is not about Joseph, but it is about, in this story, uh, illustrating some of the, of the, uh, of the differences be between Torah and, and Quran. Okay, we'll continue. I, I underlined here, though before this, you were totally unaware of them. So God says to Mo, uh, supposedly God or Allah, you may choose what you want. Allah is Arabic for God. Uh, Allah, Elohim, same word. Um, we relate to you. We give you, we'll tell you the story, says God to, to Muhammad through revelation and before this this is like i'm gonna now we, the story is gonna come of joseph and the the quran so to say for muslims that is god for non-muslims they would say this is muhammad himself but we don't want to we don't want to insult anyone let's just stay on neutral ground we'll just say the quran is telling and you're safe anyway you want uh, any from any approach the quran is actually bragging almost that Muhammad, before he wrote down this story, no, he only got it from God. He never heard about the story before. You were totally unaware of the story. You never, you never researched it. You didn't hear it from Jews, Christians, from anyone. No, it's this story is straight from heaven. You had no idea about the story. So the idea is that we, we would say, think that, yeah, story of, the, of, of Joseph went around. Uh, he, Muhammad knew Jews. He may, be, may have known Christians. We know for sure he knew Jews. He must have spoken. He must have heard it. He must have given his own twist. There's a lot of stories as we see uh, aspects of the, of, the, of the story of Joseph that you might not recognize from the Torah at all. But if you know Midrash, 
right? Allegor we believe those not they're, they're essentially different from the Torah because they are allegorical uh, stories. You would you would recognize them in the Quran. Ah, so we might think ah, so in the time of Muhammad, these stories, these Midrash stories were so popular that he also picked it up and he thought it was the Torah and he put it in the Quran. No, ah, taboo. He cannot say that for a Muslim. He cannot say that Muhammad picked it up from Jews. No, it's directly from God, pure and unaltered. Okay, so we go to the next slide. Joseph, um, maybe it's boring. I don't know, Do, shall we give people turns to read? Maybe that's a nice idea. Um, is there anyone volunteering to read? So you can raise your hand and then if I see you, then I will, oh, you can unmute and is there anyone who would like to read? I see, do you, I see a hand? Yes, I see a hand. And Bart is the name. And reading is his game. Let's, uh, Bart, can I ask you to read this page? And then we'll discuss the page after you read it. Is that okay? And sure. you might still be muted. So maybe you make sure to, to okay. press the space button. Yeah. Joseph, <clears throat> Joseph said to his father, Oh, my dear father, I dreamt of 11 stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. He replied, oh, my dear son, do not relate your vision to your brothers, as, or they will divide a plot against you. Surely Satan is sworn enemy to humankind. And your Lord will choose you, O Joseph, and teach you the interpretation of dreams, and perfect his favor upon you and the descendants of Jacob, just as he once perfected it upon your forefathers. Abraham and Isaac, surely your Lord is all-knowing, all-wise. Indeed, in the story of Joseph and his brothers, there are lessons for all who ask. Good, uh, good reading. Thank you so much, Bart. So uh, I'd like to just uh, go over this, uh, these few verses here. Uh, so we do chunk by chunk. We see here, uh, um, this is a uh, very, very familiar. We know the story about the sun and the moon and the 11 stars that prostrate before him, that bow down before him. Um, I, I always wondered, and this is nothing critical to Islam or, or any, because in the Torah, same thing. This is, I always wondered how can round objects be seen as prostrating? I can see prostrating as you bend your body and stuff, but the, a sun prostrating, just going down maybe? It's uh, interesting. That, that Okay, but that's just me. No. What we see here, Joseph said to his father, that's a big difference with the, with the Torah. In the Torah, he is saying it to the brothers and the fathers together. And the father says, what do you think? Don't, don't say these things. What do you think? Who, who, who do you are? So in the Torah, Jacob is rebuking Joseph for, for, for saying things that could upset people, that he, that he by saying these things, he's, he imagines himself being higher than others. So uh, that wasn't very modest. However, in, uh, the, in the Quran, um, Joseph is a prophet. And I wrote uh, on top, for those who know Arabic, Isma. That Isma means uh, literally in, infallibility or immunity in a way, immunity for sin. So a, a, a prophet is ma'asum is basically infallible. So you would see, while in the Torah, we see our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, you, anyone, all our big uh, uh, heroes. The Torah is never skimpy by, uh, in portraying their flaws. It is not whitewashing anyone, and it's not portraying anyone as infallible. In the, on the contrary, it's actually really portraying their flaws. Uh, you could think, uh, why is that? Why would, why would the Torah not be respectful to the prophets and why would uh, and say insulting things about the prophets? At least because I believe, and many with me, that the prophets um, are make mistakes because they are fallible, because they are human, just as we, and because they can learn from their mistakes and we can actually look at them or we can also, we can, we can learn from, they learn from their mistakes, we can learn from their mistakes, we can recognize their flaw, uh, our flaws in them 
And now we see what to do with that. The Quran, on the other hand, goes a different round, uh, route. It actually portrays the prophets all as flawless and perhaps, uh, and I've heard people say that it's necessary because then they become our example. But I personally, and, I, and I'm not, and if that's meaningful for them, it's fine with me and it's, I'm happy. If that inspires them to be a better person, I personally would have a harder time trying to emulate somebody who's flawless because I know I can never live up to that. So those are different approaches. So here, Joseph is very discreet. He doesn't tell it to his brothers, only confidentially telling his father. And the father says, oh, my son, this is something really, very special. You have a special gift from God. And I see that God has given you prophecy and he's going to give you, he's going to teach you how to, how to read these things, these, these dreams. You, he's going to teach you to interpret dreams. That's me, that means, by the way, it's a little bit different uh, point, but it's connected. Um, that not that if you are confronted with a dream, now you get inspiration and you know what the dream means through divine inspiration. No, God teaches you to interpret things. It means there's a skill. So you can now interpret any dream. You don't have to, you have it in, incalculated, incorporated in yourself, the skill to interpret dreams. Teaching a dream is, is, is teaching a skill. And you will see that God Later, uh, later in the story, if God willing, inshallah, we get that far, uh, then, uh, then we'll see. But um, so, so that is a different approach. But he says, do not tell your brothers because they will devise a plot against you. Very interesting few points. First of all, the father, Jacob, Yaakov, or Avinu, already doesn't trust his other sons. That's one thing, um, and, uh, and, and, and that raises questions later. Secondly, it, it turns out very clear from the Quran that in this version of the story, Joseph, of course, in being infallible and always, uh, always listening to his father, he doesn't tell it to us. The brothers do not know of this dream in the Quran. So why are they so angry at him then, right? We'll see that. So, um, and also, um, then, I, then, I, then, I, then I always wonder when I read verse uh, six, God will choose you, the Lord will, your Lord will choose you, Joseph, and he will teach you the interpretation of dreams and blah, blah, blah. And then it ends with, surely your Lord is all knowing, all wise. What, what does that to do? But, um, and I, I wrote in Arabic here, فَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ عَلَيْ عَلِي Alimun uh, Hakim. That is just uh, a. Uh, you have these endings of the verses often that you say oh, it's like a nice phrase, but what does it really add to the story or to the message of the story? Um, and then saying something taboo, something I shouldn't say, something I would be careful to say in the presence of Muslims. That this whole verse is rhyme. It all ends with im, in, and un. Now this is taboo. Why is that taboo? We have uh, lots of rhyme that in the, even in the Torah, there's parts that, that are poetry, not maybe rhyme, but poetry, uh, and the Psalms are poetry. Ah, but the, there's a taboo because uh, in, in Islam, you're not supposed to say that the Quran is poetry. Poetry is a human skill. So, and it's not poetry, it's something else, but it happens to rhyme. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I, it looks to me that these little endings are of the verses are sometimes put in there so for the flow of the, of the sentence for the rhyme. But um, indeed, in the story of Joseph, there are lessons for all who ask. So this is basically the end of the introduction. Ah, the story is coming now. And uh, in the story of Joseph and his brothers, there are lessons. Now we're going to hopefully find out what the lessons are. This is a little test. Uh, 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 um, how do you say a taste treat of it it, it? it makes us curious what the lessons are and who for whom are these lessons. Uh, on the bottom of the page, I have the Arabic word shaitan, Satan. So you see, there's a lot of Satan in the in in the Quran. Anything happens bad, it's Satan is a sworn enemy of the of humankind. It says in verse five. 
So the it's the the, the brothers do bad things. It is because of Shaitan. Uh, the Torah, as you know, most likely doesn't mention Shaitan at all. We don't have Shaitan. We have Satan, but Satan is 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 not an enemy. Is not responsible for our sins. We are the only ones who are responsible for our sins, and uh, and Satan is sometimes just uh, somebody that blocks our way, just like uh, with Bilam or challenges us. But it's a very 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 different take, also on free will. So we're going to the second slide, and and I was told um, I have a, a limited amount of time, and I think we started around. Can I say with the introduction seven fifteen? Is that fair? So then we have another. 15 minutes or 25, 25 minutes. Um, okay, so we'll do that. So I'll keep an eye, eye on the time. Um, anyone else wants to read maybe? Let's see, um, I, let me see, try to open the slides. Okay, now I see you again. Anyone wants to raise a hand? Justin, would you like to read? Is that okay? Yeah, he says yes. Okay, Justin, give it away. Can you hear me okay? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yes. Remember when they said to one another, certainly Joseph and his brother Benjamin are more beloved to our father than we, even though we are a group of so many. Indeed, our father is clearly mistaken. So kill Joseph or cast him out to some distant land so that our father's attention will be only ours. Then after that, you may repent and become righteous people. One of them said, do not kill Joseph. But if you must do something, throw him into the bottom of a well, so he will likely be picked up by some travelers. So um, pretty, pretty parallel to the story as we know it. But there are, again, some differences uh, here. They... Um, uh, clearly, it's not because of the dreams, and and when and it's not that that they say, oh, this master dreamer, let's tell him a le teach him a lesson and make sure that his dreams do not uh, turn to come true. Nothing because they don't know about the dreams. They're only jealous because he's the favorite of their uh, of their father. So there's a, there's a there's a thinner layer of uh, a, a, a thinner basis of a, a thinner reason to be to be upset with Joseph than in the Torah, which makes them, of course, more evil and more contrasting with Joseph, right? Um, and, and, and it's not that they, uh, they see him coming and you know what we're going to do with him. This is pre-meditated. Uh, they already are thinking, what shall we do, kill him or cast him to a distant land? That means uh, sell him as a slave to, a, to, a, to another land. And somebody says, no, you know what, we'll throw him in a, in a, in a well and then we'll leave him there. And a caravan will come by because they go from well to well and they'll find it and they'll pick him up and they will, um, they will then take him and sell him as a slave. That's what you used to do in those days. In those days, uh, if, you were, if you find somebody without protection, without a clan, without a, uh, a protection of a caravan, people are for the grabs. There's a, there's, there is a, 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 a very... Uh, how do you say widespread uh, trading of, of slaves? And who's your slave? Anyone that you conquer in war, but also somebody who's helpless without protection. Okay, we'll get him. Who's going to stop me? And so supposedly that's what they're hinting at. We'll go to the next one. And this is a bit surprising. So I'm going to maybe ask Mark, would you like to read? Sure. Good. Sure. They said, oh, our father, why don't you trust us with Joseph, although we truly wish him well? Send him out with us tomorrow so that he may enjoy himself and play, and we will really watch over him. Yeah, so the rest is footnotes. Thank you so much. Um, so, they, so they're already pre, so they're more vicious than in the Torah, because in the Torah, there was a, maybe a, 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 an outburst of anger when they saw him. Here, they plan it carefully, and they deceive their father from the beginning. They ask to the father, let him go with us, even though we want to do something bad with him. But they, they are already deceiving him from the very beginning. Um, we really wish him well, the slime bucket. Uh, 
So send us with us tomorrow so he may enjoy himself on play. According to, uh, to the Quran, Joseph was very young. Uh, uh, he, was, he was, he's still playing. Now, and I ho- wrote here in Genesis, uh, so in the Torah, Genesis 37 too. Uh, maybe Mark wants to read that also, just that, that top one. Joseph, 17 years old, was tending the flock with his brothers as he was not our with the sons of Bilha and Zilpah, two of his father's wives. Yeah, he was a Na'ar, he was a, a young man. Now Na'ar, in the, in the commentaries, we, they say, how is he a Na'ar? Na'ar, do you, you all know um, uh, L'Chadudi? Hit Na'ari, hit Na'ari. Wake up, wake up. So wake, Na'ar has to do with waking up. It means that his hormones were already aroused. He was already sexually mature, basically. That is what, uh, what so, so he was definitely not a, th- a toddler who plays, right? Who has to go with the big brothers and they, they let him play. It's, uh, that's different. Uh, I would also say that to, to plan to, se- to sell your, a five-year-old toddler because he is favored. All young kids are favored by their father, right? But 17-year-old, I can understand a bit that you are, find it obnoxious that he is so favored, but a five-year-old, you know, that, that's, you have to be, that's very, very wicked. Um, of course, it's wicked enough as it is, right? Okay. Uh, and then um, in Genesis 37, 12, uh, Mark, would you like to read this? Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. Yeah, so this is a different scenario, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we know this sto- part of the story, but uh, Joseph says, oh, your brothers are, 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 are tending the sheep in the north, and uh, I'd like you to go there. Now, if you want to go all the way from, from Hebron to Shechem, a five-year-old you're not going to send, right? 17-year-old is already a big deal, but he goes, he knows the way, and, um, and this is it. It's not pre, that's a, a, a different story. Now, uh, according to the Quran, they have to convince their father. What is the? What do they say? He responded, "It would truly sadden me if you took him away with you, and I fear that a wolf may devour him while you are negligent of him." They said, "If a wolf were to devour him, despite our strong group, then we would certainly be losers." Yeah, losers. Yeah, can you continue? When they took him away and threw him into the bottom of the well, we revealed to him, one day we will remind them of this deed of theirs while they are unaware of who you are. Yeah, isn't that something? So uh, he, he, he's, he's thrown into the pit and God already tells Joseph, he's a prophet so he can communicate with God, that one day you're going to re- rub it in to them. That uh, one's- no one's got their sound system on and it's competing with you. If they could shut their sound system off, it would be helpful. Excuse me? That one is oh. competing with you with sound. Oh, yeah. Some people are not muted. Okay. Please remember. Um, he, so God is already, while he's going into the pit, God tells him, um, it's going to be okay. Later, you're going to rub it in. Um, so in, our, in the Torah, in our scripture, we, Joseph doesn't know these things. He doesn't know if God is with him, even though he trusts in God, if there's a bigger plan involved. He doesn't know if he's ever going to see his brothers again. This is a lot of uncertainty. And therefore, his Yosef had tzaddik, the tzaddik part, trusting in God and, and still uh, you know, being loyal to God is a big deal. But here in the Quran, it's already, the outcome is already clear. I, it seems to me that the takes the challenge, uh, the sting of the challenge out a bit in the Quran, because if you know it, it's going to be fine, it's easier to go through it. I wrote here in the bottom, in the end, according to the Quran, of course, true prophets are always victorious. That is one of the, of the, um, of the, of the lessons of the, of the messages of the, of the Quran. Uh, I'll go to, um, to, um, who was, re- um, uh, Leon, uh, Oh, you couldn't see it. I forget. Jonathan Kay, would you like to read this? Okay, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Okay. A bit, yeah. 
Oh. Then they returned to their father in the evening, weeping. They cried, Oh, father, we went racing and left Joseph with our belongings, and a wolf devoured him. But you will not believe us, no matter how truthful we are. In all honesty and, and without being disrespectful, it seems like not a smart uh, way to convince your father by saying, I'm going to say something to you now, but you're not going to believe me anyway. And you said that you're afraid of a wolf. Now it happens exactly that that happens. Uh, a wolf. How do they even know it's a wolf? Is my question. Could be a lion. Uh, were there lions? Maybe there were a lot of wolves there. So, but, uh, but it's interesting that in the story of the Quran, Jacob said, I'm afraid of a wolf. And they say, it's a wolf. Crying wolf is what they call that. <laughs> uh, verse 18, uh, uh, Jonathan. And they brought his shirt stained with false blood. He responded, no, your souls must have tempted you to do something evil. Now I can only endure with beautiful patience, forbearance. It is Allah's help that I seek to bear your claims. Yeah, so um, not to go on it too long, but we see uh, he, they brought the shirt in the Torah. Uh, Jacob says, oh, it means that my son is, is, is devoured by a wild animal. But here he says he was afraid that the wolf would eat him. But now they show him that, that it indeed happened. And it turns out that he doesn't believe it. He says, no, it's one of you guys must have done something bad. Interesting. Uh, how does that play out? But he, says, but he says, oh, but I have to forbear. I have to, because God's will always happen. Always, uh, is, God's always in charge. So all we can do is, it's called patience in Arabic, sabr, uh, forbearance, just forbearance and trusting God. That's all we can do. So, um, and, he, and, he, and he says, and not in the Torah, he says, oh, I'm going to, I, I'm going to go to the grave with gray hair and, and mourning. But in the Quran, J Jacob, being infallible, uh, submits to, the, to his faith and to the will of God. And he says, um, and, and he asks God for help to, um, to bear these, uh, his, his suffering. So he's from, he's much firmer than in the Torah, so to say, right? the, 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 the Ya'qub of the Quran. We'll go to... Um, to the next, um, and the time flies, time flies. Ira, uh, are you uh, available? Yeah? Yeah? Or did I there, try there you already? No, no, no. Okay, I'm here. please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, and there came some travelers, and they sent their water boy who let down his bucket into the well. He cried out, oh, what a great find. Here is a boy. And they took him secretly to be sold as merchandise. But Allah is all knowing of what they did. Yeah. Once again, that last sentence. Yeah. It's all knowing what they did. We also know now it's in the story. So why do you have to say that? I think it's because of the rhyme and to, to make it sound more religious. But uh, yeah. OK, continue. OK. Later, they sold him for a cheap price. Just a few oh. silver coins, only wanting to get rid of him. I always wonder why would you only want to get rid of him and, get, and ask him if he was so supposedly he was extremely beautiful, according to other commentaries of the Quran, was the most beautiful creature people ever thought. He was so beautiful. They all, always almost thought he was an angel. If you, mm. Why don't you get more money if you can get more? Why sell it for a few? That would be an interesting question to ask an imam. But I don't know if there is an answer to that. And then. Go on. OK. The the man from Egypt who brought him said to his wife, take good care of him. Perhaps he may be useful to us or we may adopt him as a son. <clears throat> this is how we established Joseph in the land so that we might teach him the interpretation of dreams. Allah's will always prevails. Uh, but most people do not know. Yeah, so this is a, a big message. Allah, in the end, God's mission always succeeds. Um, <clears throat> and once again, this is, uh, this is the last, uh, the last uh, sentence. The real story is uh, Potiphar, the, the, the commentaries, even Kathir is a, is a commentator of Islam, which uh, I have his commentary on this. And he said his name was Potiphar or Fotifar probably uh, in mm -hmm. Arabic. 
uh, so um, he um, and, and he was the wazir. He was the the prime minister of Pharaoh, according to the Quran. But he brought to his wife and said, oh, "Maybe he can be useful for us. He can be your slave." But he's so young. Maybe you want to adopt him as a son. I guess the wife had other plans. <laughs> um, maybe who else um, shall I? David, David iPhone. Can you read the text or no? Yes. Good. And when he reached maturity, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. This is how we reward the good doers. People who do good, I guess they get wisdom and knowledge. Uh, but this is when he uh, reached maturity. So a contrasting view, Midrash Tankuma by Yeshev, paragraph 8. Maybe you want to read that also, David? When, when Joseph found him so completely situated, he began to eat and drink well, curl his hair and say, Blessed is he who is everywhere, who helped me forget my father's house. Then the Holy One said to Joseph, your father is mourning for you in sackcloth and ashes, and you eat and drink and curl your hair. You are a pampered brat. Then it, then it happened, it came to pass that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Yeah, so... Um... Uh, Joseph was so comfortable. He said, "Okay, I can forget my I'm so I'm 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 at home here. I still believe in God, but you know, uh, God brought me here, so I'm going to not think, be mourning about uh, my family so much anymore." And God says, "What? Your father is in deep mourning because of you, and you tried to forget him. I'm going to teach you a lesson." And then, um, I, I, and then he, uh, and then the wife started uh, testing testing him. So. Um, and which led to other uh, ch challenges in his life. Would you like to read another verse? Uh, let me open up here. Uh, yes. And the lady in whose house he lived tried to seduce him. She locked the doors and firmly said, come to me. He replied, Allah is my refuge. My master has taken good care of me. Sinners never succeed. Yeah, Allah is my refuge. Ma'ad Allah, it says in, in Arabic. So it's interesting. He's actually um, teaching her about Allah and about Islam already, and uh, he's really a good uh, a good messenger of God, right? So um, uh, in the Torah, it just says, "No, my my, I, I, I would be horrible to betray my father, my master. He he really gave me everything except for you, and I would take that and steal that from from him." But uh, no, in the Quran, he's actually preaching preaching um, monotheism to uh, Potiphar's wife. Who is basically the wife of a of a high priest of uh, of, of of an idol? Very interesting. Now, this is a, this is a, the the continuation of the midrash. The wife of Potiphar tried to seduce him every day with her talk. She, the clothes she put on for him in the morning, she did not wear in the evening. What she wore in the evening, she didn't put on in the morning. She wanted to be really attractive. She said to him, "Surrender to me." He said, "No, I will not." She says. I will lock you up in a prison. And he says, God sets the prisoners free. Matir Asurim. She says, I'm going to bend your proud stature. And he answered, God makes those who are bent stand straight. Zokev Kufufim. It looks like she, he's not just talk, th 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 talking about God. He's also teaching her the morning, morning blessings. She says, I'm going to blind your eyes. And he says, God restores size to the blind. Okay, Ahibrim. She offered him a thousand talents of silver to make him give in to her, but he would not listen to her and lie with her in this world so that he would not have to be with her in the world to come. I guess the rabbis of the Midrash probably think that because he didn't lie with her in this world, he's not going to be with her in the world to come, i.e. hell, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, that's just a guess. Now, um, who else can I ask? Can I ask... Uh, Joe Cohen, are you available? She advanced towards him, and he would have done likewise had he not seen and signed for his Lord, from his from his Lord. This, I'm sorry, is very small in my in my screen. Okay. Oh, so sorry. This is how we kept, this is how we kept evil and distancy away from him, for he was truly one of our chosen servants. So he was a chosen servant. That means he was a. Uh... One of these uh, infallible uh, people. So we wanted him to protect him against evil can sin. Because otherwise, if he sinned, he would be unworthy of being a, a prophet. And this is, we chose it for him. So 
she advanced towards him and he would have done likewise, meaning he would, he was also um, inclined, so to say, but we, we gave him a sign from his Lord. This is actually, um, I think, connected to a Midrash. And the Midrash here says, in Talmud Bavli Sota 36b, maybe we won't call it a Midrash, but we call it Agada for sure. Is it too small for you to read this or uh, shall, or is it possible to read I it? To read it. <coughs> says, Talmud Bavli Sota 36b. One day he went into the house to do his work. This is Genesis 39, 11. Baba Yohanan said about his work. This teaches us that both Potiphar's wife and Yosef had the intention to act immorally. Rav and Shmuel disagree about this interpretation. One of them who did not believe that he came with well, one, the Sorry, intention. one of them, but we don't know who it was. One of them did not believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he came with the intention. But in any case, at a certain point, he was about to give in. At that moment, the image of his father appeared to him through the window and said, Yosef, your brothers will have their names inscribed on the stones of Ephod together with yours. Do you want your name to be erased and that you'll be called a companion of harlots? Yeah, so so the, the, the Midrash says, Rabbi Yohanan at least says, it says in the Torah, one day he went into the house to do his work. What is his work? Maybe that is code word for to do his thing with the women. So, um, so they say this means that he was about to going to do the work. He was going to, to um, dedicate himself to, uh, to give himself in. But, uh, but then he, he, he had a flashback. He saw his father's, his inner conscience, I guess, uh, projected as his, as his father. Uh, and um, maybe that the Midrash is reflected in the Quran here where it says he would have done likewise had he not seen the sign from his Lord. Okay, um, um, they, I, I'm going to speed up a bit because time is uh, actually, I'm over time, but um, I guess uh, you're all very, you're not, none, is, no, none of you is complaining yet, but I want to um, avoid the complaints, all right? <laughs> they raced for the door and she tore the shirt from his back. She uh, yeah, tore it, that uh, feisty lady, only to find her husband at the door. She cried, what is the penalty for someone who tried to violate your wife? Shouldn't it be imprisonment or a painful punishment? Joseph responded, it was she who tried to seduce me. And a witness from her own family, family testified, smart guy, if his shirt is torn from the front, then she told the truth and he's a liar. But if it's torn from the back, that means he was running away, then she has lied and he is truthful. So when the husband saw that Joseph's shirt was torn from the back, he said to her, ah, this is proof of the cunning of women. Your cunning is so shrewd. Meaning, you all, you women, no, I can never trust any of these women. And Joseph, forget about this. So he's not even thrown in jail by the husband. That's different from the Torah, right? Uh, Joseph, you're off the hook. And you, wife, seek forgiveness from, for your sin. He's also, I guess, uh, Islam is contagious. He's also saying, ask forgiveness. Uh, it, and he's willing to forgive, I guess. He's a very understanding husband. It certainly has been your fault. Now, this is a very famous one. Some women of the city gossiped. The chief minister's wife is trying to seduce her slave boy. Love for him has plagued her heart. Indeed, we see that she's clearly mistaken. That last sentence, again, is a rhyme, but she's off the, the, he's, she's off the derech. When she heard about her, their gossip, she invited them and set a blanket for them. She gave each one a knife and then said to Joseph, come out before them. When they saw him, they were so stunned by his beauty that they cut their hands without noticing and they exclaimed, good God, this cannot be a human. This must be a noble angel. So uh, this is a, also a famous uh, Midrash. And she could, could continue. She says, this is the one for whose love you criticize me. I did try to seduce him, but he refused. Now, if he doesn't do what I order him to do, he will certainly be imprisoned and fully disgraced. The, the Midrash says the following. On one occasion, a group of e e uh, Egyptian women gathered. and They were eager to see his beauty. What did Potiphar's wife do? She took etrogim, placed them before the women, and gave each of them a knife. Then, that's sorry for the typo, she summoned Joseph 
and had him stand before them. As they peeled the etrogim, while gazing at Joseph's beauty, they cut their fingers. Then Potiphar's wife said, you who saw him only for one instant are so overwhelmed. How much more am I who see him all the time? Um, so it's a juicy story. It's interesting, uh, this story, of course, because it's in the Quran, is more known uh, among Muslims than usually about Jews, even though the Midrash is older than the Quran. Uh, so um, now, how does he end up in jail? Joseph prayed, my Lord, I would rather be in jail than do what they uh, invite me to, what they, uh, what they, what they try to uh, seduce me to do. And if you do not turn their cunning away from me, I might yield to them. And I am fallen to ignorance and fallen to sin, basically. So his Lord responded to him. And, and 35, so it occurred to those in charge, despite they, they saw that all the proofs of his innocence, that he should be imprisoned. So it's not that he was accused by Potiphar's wife, according to the Quran, and then thrown in jail by a uh, jealous husband. The husbands forgave him already. Everybody knew his innocence, but he prayed to go to jail. I'd rather go to jail. He prayed to go to jail so he wouldn't be seduced by the, by the wife. That's the Quran. That's uh, such a, an example of, of religiosity. Now we have the, uh, the, 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 the baker and the wine bearer. I don't think we're going to get into it. We're going to go to the, to the message. To the message. Um, when, when Joseph uh, gets in front of the Pharaoh, he says, what happened with these women? Because uh, something happened there. And um, so they asked the women, did you get anything out of it when you tried to seduce Joseph? And they said, Allah forbid, hashallah, literally, hashallah. We know nothing indecent about him. So now the truth has come to light, says the Potiphar. It was um, the Potiphar's wife. The truth has come out. It was I who tried to seduce him, and he is truthful. And now he says, but Joseph should know, I never spoke dishonestly about him in his absence. So I've always spoke well about him. I got it. So I was nice. I got him in jail, but uh, okay. And I do not seek to free myself from blame for the soul is ever inclined to evil, except for those who show mercy by my Lord. Surely my Lord is all forgiving. So she really uh, is portrayed here as a very religious and uh, faithful Muslima. Now, at the end, it says here that Joseph's parents come. This is a, a skip a, a big chunk. Joseph's parents come. And so even in the Torah, according to the Torah, um, his, his mother's already uh, passed away. Secure, really. Okay, passed away. So, uh, so that is, would not fit. And he raises his parents to the throne. Big, big difference too. That would not happen in, in Egypt, according to uh, the Torah. And, um, oh, my dear father, he says, this is the interpretation of my old dream. See, it all came out. Uh, and then he says, he was kind to me and he brought you through the desert. Thank God. And after S Satan, Shaitan, had uh, messed it up between my brothers and me. And, um, but, but God is, 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 is steadfast in what he wants. So his will will always come out. My Lord, and now he speaks to God, you have granted me authority and you taught me the interpretation of dreams. Allow me, he says, to die as one who submits, which literally is, allow me to die as a Muslim. According to Islam, the, all the prophets were already proto-Muslims, even though they didn't believe in Islam. But according to them, basically, uh, the, the religion of Moses, of Abraham, of Joseph is really uh, a kind of an idea that they were Muslims already. Now, what's the conclusion? What's the lesson? First, 103. This is from the stories that you haven't seen. This is like the beginning. But you, you didn't know about the stories. But we revealed it to you, O Prophet Muhammad. You weren't present, so you, uh, when, they, when they made up their mind and uh, when you plotted it. But I was there, but this is what happens. We send before you men inspired by us, meaning people who got revelation, uh, to every society, to every, to every nation. 
And surely the eternal home of the hereafter, now it talks about the hereafter, something that the Torah actually never does, uh, is better. So this is basically what the people were, were supposed to tell. The prophets, according to Islam, were all telling about the hereafter and telling people, go, this is the last slide. And when these messengers were disparate and their people thought that these messengers were helpless, our help, meaning God's help, came to them at last. We then saved them whoever we wanted, because it's always God's will. And our punishment is never averted from wicked people, which is basically in their stories, there's a lesson. Now, what's the lesson? We said it in the beginning, there's a lesson. Ah, this becomes clear. This, this surah, this chapter of the Quran is one of the earliest one. It's called the Meccan one. He started in Mecca and he didn't have any power yet. And in the time of uh, when, when Muhammad still lived in Mecca, he had no power. He was still uh, somewhat more sympathetic to the Jews because there were no Jews in Mecca. When he got to know a lot of Jews in Medina, that turned around because they didn't want to believe in him. He saw himself as standing in the tradition of Jews and Christians. And, but the, the people in Mecca uh, didn't put him under pressure and didn't want to follow him. And he was, uh, his, some of his followers were harassed and he felt, so this is a message from Muhammad. Personally, in my opinion, because Muhammad was under pressure and he was mocked and he was uh, and 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 just like Joseph was under pressure and, and didn't believe in the end, God stood by Joseph. It's the same. Muhammad took this lesson. It's the same. Eventually, Muhammad would be victorious and in power, just like Joseph would be in power. That's so I think that Muhammad took this took this, this story as a, uh, as, as a, well, as, as an expectation for what, what he hoped to, uh, the way how he hoped to uh, turn out. I have a few points, keywords, prophet. We talked about the prophet. There's, there's a big deal in, we have prophets, but uh, there's many people in the, in, uh, that we in the Torah have that in common with Islam, but Islam calls them prophets. And we generally don't call Abraham prophet or, or Joseph a prophet, even though they speak to God. Uh, but the term prophet is much more widely used. And it actually, as I said, it is a prophet is actually somebody not just who talks to God, but is also who's flawless. Now we have here illiterate. That was a big thing for Muhammad to say that I'm illiterate. How can, can I come up with all this information without uh, be, studied anything? This, this is a proof for Muslims that he was literate and still produced these verses of the Quran, a proof that it has to be uh, um, uh, supernatural uh, inspiration, uh, revelation. Uh, this is a, the term messenger comes up. A messenger is a prophet, but somebody also who has power, has ru rules over a nation, over a land, over a, the, the term infallible was very important. The, the rule of Satan, that God's will always prevails. Um, then submission to God's will and forbearance. If things go bad, just forbear. Just be patiently suffering and trusting that God will, will, will prevail. Those, I think, are some of the themes that we saw in the story of Joseph, which is uh, for sure, if they are there at all, and some of them are probably are not there in the, in the our Torah story, and some of them might be there a bit, but it's definitely not as prevalent as, as um, how do you say prevalent? This is another word I was looking for. And this, I think, should conclude my speech. And I'm way over time, my time limits. I hope you found it interesting. There, there was time, uh, there is perhaps still some time for questions because I, I feel comfortable offering that because uh, anyone who has enough can just sign out and you're not missing anything of the, of the, of the, of, of the lecture. But those people who want to hang longer and ask questions and have a little uh, conversation, I am here and welcome to answer questions if I can, of course. Rabbi okay. Shimon is, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Just, um, uh, Shimon, thank you so much. One, what a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Very oh, nice. We learn a lot between um, what in the Torah and what is in the, in the Quran because we didn't only learn only what the Quran says, but also what the Torah says and the Midrash, of course. We see a lot of that um, of many things that are um, 
taken from the Midrash and put into the Quran, as opposed to take it, taken literally from the Torah, which is very nice uh, to, to see the, the, this, this distinction. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. It says, um, <laughs> uh, it says about the brother, commit a sin and then you repent. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Big contrast with Judaism, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always repent later, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're already planning your repentance. <laughs> become, become righteous later. It's always right. time to repent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. No, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's very funny. Cool. Uh, I think uh, Andrew had this. I wanted to uh, say something. Rabbi Shimon, is there any significance to the fact that um, that Yaakov's name is not mentioned? Are there other stories about Yaakov as well, or does the Quran just focus on on uh, Yusuf? Uh, no, well, um, there are the the, the name Yaakov uh, does occur in the Quran, just not here. And and that the question, of course, you would wonder why is that? Uh, also, his name of the brothers are not uh, when they say, "Shall we kill him or shall we sell him?" It says one of them spoke up, and it doesn't right. mean a name. So in the in in the in the commentaries of the of, of the Quran, it says some people say it was Shamun, <laughs> and other people say it was Yahuda, Yahuda, and the third say it's Rubil, the oldest one Rubil with an L at the end. Uh, so um, it says actually that I read you no. Know, he later in the we didn't we didn't uh, mention it, but in later parts that we skipped we skipped the whole story about in jail and with uh, and with the, the 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 wine pourer and the baker and stuff. He actually says, um, I, my he he refers to Jacob his father. Yeah, I remember. But my uh, I my ancestors he says Ibrahim, Ishak, and Jacob. So he actually is clear that it was known. Yeah, right. but uh, to be honest, uh, the name uh, Muhammad also doesn't occur in the Quran. I right, think. Maybe, maybe once or twice, but hardly so. Uh, even though it's it's everybody knows who it is, but it's it's maybe a style not to use the names. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that answers your question, Andrew. Andy. It, yes, it absolutely does. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good. Rabbi Shimon, it's very beautiful, nice presentation. Thank you very much. I, I thank you, Leon. Uh, Bart has a question. Uh, not so much as to the specific uh, discussion tonight, although it touches on it, but more to your extremely broad expertise in Islam and Judaism. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out when you talk about efforts between imams and rabbis, yeah, who somehow have dialogue when it crushes, rushes up against the Islamic teaching that our prophets, although they were Muslims, even though maybe they may not have been aware of it, when Judaism so predates Islam. I mean, I just don't understand. Oh. And how do you get beyond that? In a, uh, that in a is a very interesting point. Very interesting point. Now, um, the, the, yeah, so how can you even... Imagine that now. Islam, of course, you, you we might agree under certain, uh, you know, uh, with 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 certain um, quotation marks. Agree in the literal sense of the word, a Muslim or Islam means submission. Yes. It means uh, submitting to the word of God or apply or, or uh, complying with God's will. Right. So uh, submitting to God's will. So if we assume that, let's say, Moses obeyed God. Then he, then he is in the literal sense of the of the word a Muslim. So th we could say, okay, they were Muslims, but but then we are Muslims still because we abide by God's will. We just define God's will, and we understand God's will a bit different from Mohammedan Muslims. We are maybe Mosaic Muslims, and they are Mohammedan Muslims, but we each have a different understanding of God's will. But often. So if you say that Abraham and, and Moses were, were Muslims, we could, and for us to agree, we would have to then say that, then you have to accept us also as Muslims. Unfortunately, that is usually not accepted by, by them because 
did, they didn't believe, they don't believe that we really follow God's word because that's another whole different aspect. So they think that we distorted it and this is, it's, it becomes nasty. But if they say, okay, you're a Muslim too, then I have no problem with calling. Uh, uh, so, uh, right, uh, in, in the literal sense of the word. Now, and then I say, what do you mean? But if it, I say I might agree that there was Islam that made people submit it to God's will, but Islam, you have to agree that Islam was different from what it's now. No, it was exactly the same. But they, Muhammad wasn't born. They didn't say Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad was his messenger. They didn't know Muhammad. So they, how could they have believed in Muhammad? Yeah, that's true. So maybe they said, uh, La ilaha illallah ba Musa Rasulullah. There's no God, but only one God, and Moses is his messenger. And, uh, and it, that's, yeah, yeah, they probably said that. But is that, that's not the same. I can say that, but you will have a hard time saying it because for you, so, you know what I'm saying? You get into, uh, it's, it's interesting to have dialogues, but there's a lot of booby traps there. You step on one thing and boom, they blow up because, it, now, for instance, if you say, but the Torah, you believe in the, if you say, why don't you uh, accept the Torah? Oh, we accept the Torah. It's one of the books that God gave. Alhamdulillah, no problem, of course. No, Yeah, but so, okay, nice, you believe in the Torah. Okay, now we can talk. So the Torah says this. Ah, but, uh, and that goes against your teaching. Oh, but you, you changed the Torah. The Torah is not the original Torah. The original Torah was exactly like the Quran. Hmm, then you say, interesting, the Quran is all talking about Muhammad all over the place. But how can our uh, so uh, and and about let's say a, a battle between uh, between Muhammad's army and the other army uh, is that was that in the Torah? So how how do you see that? So, so there is there's a lot of uh, I, it's better sometimes to ask questions than to than to 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 to, to come up with your own arguments. It's sometimes better to ask questions and say so how do you how do you visualize the the, the original Torah then if uh, but they will believe that Muhammad was mentioned pre, uh, pre-announced, pre basically, but that we took him out because we didn't like the person. Um, but, uh, but, but so if, if, uh, if, it says, uh, uh, if it says in the Quran, do not bother the prophet by visiting him and uh, if he's, you're invited to dinner by staying too long and asking him questions, would that be in the Quran, in the Torah initially? You know, it's this is about something really personal about Muhammad. So, okay, maybe that wasn't there. So, what was there? You know, just asking questions. You know, that's sometimes the best way to do it. But you have to know all these booby traps. There's all these landmines that you uh, and these assumptions that people have about uh, about what they think about the Torah, about the Quran. That uh, helps to be aware of that, really. Yeah. May, may I say something she won't hear? Yeah. Very, because Harambam says uh, we cannot discuss uh, the text with the Muslims, but you yeah. can discuss the text with the Christians. Because, sure. because the Christian, we have a common text. Yeah. Interpretation. But the Muslim, different text. Therefore, it's better not to discuss yeah. with, with the Muslim about these issues. But just uh, um, be kind and friendly and, and respectful, yeah. right, with the Muslims, and, uh, and, and not get into the, the text. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, of course. And it makes sense because uh, most Muslims, uh, as long as you agree, it's fine, but then you come with your own text, and the, they would not say, hmm, how do I see that? that immediately, if it disagrees with them, they say, ah, oh, but that's because you changed it. And then, yeah. they, then they deny the Torah again. So another, uh, but you can still argue, but maybe not. But the question is, they say they, they, they accept the Torah, but what is accepting the Torah if you don't accept the text in front of you? So I can say I, can, I, I, can say I accept the Quran, but what's in the Quran, uh, not what's in the Quran, just uh, the Quran itself as an idea, but Muhammad put all these own things in the Quran, but originally there was some... That, would they still say that I accept the, Cor- the Quran if I would say that? Is that still accepted the Quran? No, it was not. Not No, but, but you're absolutely right. Now, there are some people, actually, to be honest, 
and and um, this is also very interesting. When the Quran says that Jews twist the words, right? It's called tahrif, right? You harifu kalimat min 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 maqamihim, min maqamiha. So uh, the, the people and and so. But, but it is, there's a word and we turn things around and we say, this is next to that word. And we, we do that. We reinterpret things. We use the, the Torah and uh, we don't always read the, the Peshat. We sometimes, you, uh, we say, because this le- there's a letter missing and this means that. And okay, initially, and there is many, uh, many, many uh, sources in, old sources in the Quran. Initially, it just meant, uh, most likely, in all likelihood, that this meant that Jews have the right text, but they interpreted it a bit in a, in a roundabout way. But later when people started actually studying the Torah and they say, oh, but look, all the things we thought was it would be in there, uh, prediction of Muhammad is not in there. Ah, now it must mean we, they reinterpret that idea about twisting that not just they, they that not just we interpret in a roundabout way, we actually change the text. And that is a later interpretation. Now, there are some Muslims, and I've met, who went deeper, and they say, no, that's very few, very few, I have to admit, very few of these Muslims. But there are some who say the text is still correct. Still correct. In that case, maybe you could, uh, in all, uh, uh, very carefully and with respect, and see if that really holds water. Maybe you could talk about certain things, maybe about uh, Psalms. I know... People who've actually discussed Psalms with uh, with uh, with Muslims, um, and that's basically it. I have I have recorded some of these uh, with with art, some Psalms, and and also the Ten Commandments, and with an Arabic translation. And I get tons of uh, comments. Yeah, uh, so people are very, there are uh, people are interested in in learning uh, learning these things. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Very nice. What about Shimon? Yes, Eli. Good evening to you and to everyone else. What a wonderful showing um, of force uh, for Mikveh this evening. And uh, I have to tell you that it's fascinating, fascinating. It doesn't matter. You could talk for hours right yes, now. Yes, indeed. This <laughs> and I and, often and I do. That, <laughs> and, and I believe most of the people would stay there and oh. stay here and listen to you. So, Chazaku um, Baruch. Thank you so much. Me, I, I have to tell you, um, the to- the approaches are entirely different yeah. between the two, and um, you know the innocence of the Torah story has an innocence to it uh, that develops. Yosef goes out into the field. A man finds him. He asks him, "Where are you going?" And then Yosef says those very famous words of. I'm looking for my brothers. And then he tells them, oh, they went to this and this. And then it kind of develops. They see him from afar. They think about something. What should we do about him? And then it kind of all develops itself. Whereas here, there is more of a, a pre-planned, you've already said this, but there's, there's a more of a pre-planned kind of conniving, ready story that I dare say, and I only in this form, almost reminiscent of a thousand nights in a night. Uh-huh. So, so it's kind of a, fe- a feeling that, that everything was pre-planned in this way. And the sin is not by, if, if God did everything, then the sin is from God. No, 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 no. The Satan is the one who's responsible for the sin. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, the approach is, is entirely different. It is. Fascinating as to the way they look at, at it. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's like a classic children's story. The good guy is really the good guy, and the bad guys are very much the bad guys, and it's very black and white, while the Torah, I think, is more y- human, more, uh, more realistic, I think. Uh, that's um, a, a very, uh, that's, uh, I, I'm biased, of course, maybe, but uh, that's how I feel it, yeah. But the end of the story, at the end of the story, it, for instance, if I remember correctly in the Quran, Yosef delivers a speech in the prison to yeah. his, to the inmates. Yeah. And in, in the speech that he delivers in that surah, 
in the speech that he delivers, he delivers to the Mu'ameen. He delivers to those who believe. He wants them to believe in monotheism. Yes. At the very end, he wishes to die as a Muslim. Yeah. So there is a regurgitation of, a, you know, there's a, an inclusion of bringing that, that particular um, uh, story into the fold of Islam. Yeah, here uh, they say, can you explain our dreams? And he says, well, I cannot just only explain the dreams. I can even tell you what kind of a meal you're going to, going to be served before the dream comes true. So he's bragging that, uh, but uh, that is knowledge I got from uh, that God taught me. No. And then he goes on and on for, for a bunch of slides, just preaching monotheism and, and, uh, and, and, and saying there's only one God and why, you know, all these things. And, you know, it's, he's very much a, a, a preacher, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's very, uh, very clear cards. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Thank you so much. I love, I love it. It's I love event. how he's thrown into a well, by the way, yeah. not, not into a hole in the ground. He's thrown, right, right. which is the number one crime in any oasis. Right. But, so, uh, a jump. A jump. A jump is probably, yeah. Let's just continue the discussion because it's fascinating, as our partner said, fascinating, fascinating. We can stay here for hours, but everybody has a lot of things to do, nevertheless. But never, uh, we, would, we really enjoy it very much. So thankful. Opportunity coming very soon. So thank you so much and good night to everybody. Reminding everybody that Ben Shema Isra Shana Hayaru Etehabatson.